Love it or hate it, Five Nights at Freddy's has been killing it since its release, and here are my thoughts, spoiler free. I played the Five Nights at Freddy's game uh, a little back in the day. Uh, admittedly, I don't know a whole lot about the lore, but I'm pretty familiar with the characters. Now, I've, I've seen plenty of reviews out there, and most of them seem to be from either fans of the game or fans of the horror genre. I'm somewhere in the middle and I'm going to try to bring a balanced approach to the review and here's how it's going to go down. I'll break the review down into visuals, acting and direction, story, and then wrap it all up with my final thoughts. So let's dive in. Starting with the visuals, uh, I gotta say I really loved the look of the film and the way it used color. Freddy's was full of bright vibrant hues that really popped. Uh, this was a great contrast to Mike's house which was pretty muted, with one exception, and that was Abby's room. The color in her room uh, connected her with Freddy's in a really cool way, uh, and I also enjoyed the juxtaposition of the bright colors with the dark uh, tone of the film. And the cinematography? Solid. But then again, it's rare to see bad camera work in films of this size. Uh, now let's talk about the acting. Seeing Matthew Lillard in this role was a treat. Uh, I loved the little nod that he gave to his character Stu from Scream uh, and Josh Hutchinson. I haven't seen much of his work, but I thought his portrayal of Mike was spot on and I was really rooting for his character. Uh, Elizabeth Lale's character Vanessa was a great addition. She brought this sort of awkwardness to the dynamic that made you th uh, suspect that something was up. Uh, but the real scene stealer was Piper Rubio who played Abby. Uh, she absolutely nailed that part, and I loved uh, I loved her character, and I loved um, her acting all through the, throughout the film. On to the story. As I mentioned earlier, I only played a little bit of Five Nights at Freddy's back in the day, so I wasn't sure what to expect story-wise. But the main plot line was interesting, uh, pretty creepy, and definitely kept me invested. Uh, as for the subplot involving Mike and Abby, it was there to give you a reason to care about these characters, but it didn't feel like an afterthought. I actually found myself really caring about them. The way that the writers merged the two plots at the end was really well done, uh, in my opinion. Overall, Five Nights at Freddy's is a well-written, well-produced movie that was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of jump scares, which is fine to me because I feel like jump scares um, are often overused and just kind of cheapen the entire experience. The spooky factor comes from the storytelling, the atmosphere, the visuals. Do I think it's a great film? No, but it's worth getting some friends together for a movie night. Uh, I've seen many people talk about their less than fun theater experiences, so I'm really glad that we watched this one at home. Now, if you want movies similar to this one, I highly recommend uh, Willy's Wonderland stars Nick Cage and also uh, The Banana Splits, which was a kids show back in the 70s, but uh, I believe Blumhouse bought the rights to a lot of those um, old uh, Hannibal Barrera properties and they turned it into a horror film, which was pretty interesting. It was a little, it was a little goofier than this movie, uh, but it's definitely worth checking out as well. I think that one is on Amazon Prime, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Now, if you enjoyed this review or our time together, please consider subscribing or following uh, for more content like this. And until next time, this is James Chaotic saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night.